Welcome to r slash am I the jerk, where Karen's secret affair isn't as secret as she thinks. My fiancé left on a work trip, which turned out to be a romantic vacation with her fling. My fiancé left on a work trip three days ago. It turns out that this supposed work trip was actually a romantic getaway with a fling that she's had for who knows how long. They're 2,000 miles away in a different country and they're staying at a luxury hotel together. She has absolutely no idea that I know and we've been communicating as if everything were normal. I had a weird feeling something was going on recently and she made some mistakes in hiding her infidelity. I just found out two days ago. I have five days before she returns home and I plan on keeping calm until she returns to an empty house. I have another place that I can easily move to and we currently rent an apartment together. Aside from giving notice with the management at my building that I'll be leaving, what other steps should I be taking? We have a dog as well that we bought together. Can I take him away with me legally or will that cause issues for me? I don't even know what else I'm forgetting to think about here as my mind is going a mile a minute, but any additional advice would be greatly appreciated. I really don't know if I can have a conversation with her when she gets home. I want to just disappear. When you move out, document all of her property that you have left in the apartment and the condition of the entire apartment so you can prove it's in good order. Separate all finances and cancel credit cards. Lock down your credit, talk to the bank, cancel your joint subscriptions, change all of your passwords on everything. Car leases, phone plans, keep copies of all documentation of affair, just in case. Whatever you do, don't confront her when she gets home. If she's crazy enough to pull something like this, expect that she will gaslight you like no tomorrow and only make the situation worse. The best step would be not to give her that closure that she's going to desire. I'm sorry that you're dealing with this. Three years of extended betrayal. Do not expect her to go quiet. Take a deep breath and focus on yourself. Copy all the evidence to a secure place. Get your name removed from everything. Am I the jerk for filing for divorce because my husband over-tightens all the jar lids? His over-tightening of jar lids has been an issue since he was just visiting at my house when we were dating. First it started with just things he used and then over time it became every glass jar with a metal lid. He had tightened them so much, I couldn't open them without assistance. It wasn't a huge deal if he was there, but if I was alone, it was so annoying. More times than I can count, I've opened a new jar of something because I couldn't get the jar open. It's been a recurring cycle over the past five years. It's just a thing that would escalate until I had a major meltdown and freaked out, screaming, frustrated, and seemingly crazy because it's just a lid. Then it would get better for a while. Then it would slowly become an issue again just getting worse and worse until I reach a breaking point again. Sometimes I literally feel insane for being so upset over jar lids. He initially claimed that he did it to keep food fresh. After many arguments about it and my insistence that I don't believe it keeps anything fresh and even if it does make things last longer, I don't care if it means I can't eat my food when I want to. I'll just replace things that go bad because they are closed normally. Then the excuse was that it's a habit. So about a month ago, my husband had a family emergency and had to travel out of state for 10 days. First day he's gone, I discover a jar I can't open. I was annoyed and was going to the store to buy new pickles when my neighbor said hi and to let him know if I needed anything when my soon-to-be ex was out of town. I said wait here and I got the jar which he opened for me. The next day I saw him outside and asked him to open another jar. He offered to come open all of the jars. I agreed and he came in and we went to the fridge and opened all the jars except for two, which he couldn't get open. I thanked him profusely and I told him I'd bake some of his favorite cookies later in the week. He laughed and said it was no big deal and after confirming that I wouldn't be upset if the remaining two jars were destroyed in his attempt to open them, he took them home to his garage to open them one way or another. He said that he's heard me screaming about over-tightened jar lids a few times over the years and he's really pondered if I was crazy or if my husband was really over-tightening the jar lids. He said, You know this was intentional. It was every jar, and I'm sure he doesn't regularly use your hot pepper paste or mango puree or any of your other fancy cooking stuff. Then he held up the two jars he couldn't open and said, I don't know why he's doing it, but it wasn't an accident. After he left, I locked the door and sat on my kitchen floor and cried. Then I felt hot and lightheaded. I got sick. It crossed my mind that I could be having a heart attack. I thought about calling 911, but I sat back down on my kitchen floor instead and I was just okay with whatever happened. Later, the neighbor came back with the open jar of hot fudge and apologized that he couldn't save the figs. He said he broke the jar trying to get it open. He also apologized for what he said about my husband doing it on purpose. I assured him it was okay. I couldn't sleep that night, tossed and turned all night. I called out of work. 
By 10 a.m., I realized that I couldn't stay married anymore, and I made an appointment with a lawyer for the next day. There are literally no other issues. No cheating, no mistreatment. We had a good love life. Both have good jobs, nice house, no financial issues. He was absolutely blindsided when he came home, and I told him I wanted a divorce. He still won't admit that he tightened the lids on purpose. He'd suggested we go to marriage counseling, but I refused. There is no point. I just literally can't get past the jar lids. I still feel a little crazy about that. I have no idea why he would tighten every jar lid so tightly that I couldn't open it. He has given me no reason. He still won't even admit that he did it on purpose. But the hot pepper paste is in the back of the fridge. I use it only when I make Indian food. It's behind other things, and he's never used it. It's nothing you could put in food without cooking it. The pepper paste could not have been an accident. It couldn't have been. Maybe he put mango puree on his toast or in his oatmeal, but the pepper paste couldn't have been an accident. That's what my life comes down to. I'm getting a divorce because the lid to my hot pepper paste was over tightened. If it had been every jar except for one, I could try. I could have a silver of doubt. I could do something else, but I just can't get past the hot pepper paste. I'm just imagining this dude sneaking into a dark kitchen every night to tighten all of the jar lids while laughing like a maniac. My ex told me that he just didn't hear our two babies when they were awake at night. Too tired and just didn't hear them. I believed him. When the younger one was three, my ex told me that he had lied. He smiled about it. I knew you'd get up. Of course I heard it every time. I divorced him six months later. Like you, it really got to me. All 33 years with my husband, he did nothing but make my life easier, better. Know why? Because he loves me. Your man is trying to make your life harder, make you seem crazy and unhinged. That's not love. It's not about the jars and lids. He's not nurturing you. He's trying to make you dependent in some way, however small a way it is. His ego has cost him you. I too would not be able to trust my man if he did this type of thing. And without trust, there's no relationship. Not the jerk. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her husband? Please let us know. This is the only downside of drinking Karen's new superpower protein drink mix. Maybe we'll put a disclaimer on the bottle or something. May cause superhuman strength that causes your wife to divorce you. Grandpa is punishing my dad. I have the power to stop it, but don't know if I actually want to. I, 21 female, lost my mom when I was 14. Dad remarried when I was 17. My stepmom has a daughter who's 15. She and dad had a boy who's three, and now she just had a daughter. Anyway, I have worked since I was 16 to have some money to buy stuff for myself. When I turned 18, dad said I was now an adult and should start paying rent. It was only $500, a symbolic amount since he would still cover food and other essentials. I was mad and we fought, but in the end I accepted that and that was the arrangement until seven months ago. Dad came to me saying I had two months to move out because stepmom was pregnant and they would need my room for the baby which is insane because they both have private offices. My stepmom doesn't even need one since she's a stay-at-home mom since the birth of my baby brother. Nonetheless, they told me I had to move out. By the way, just an addendum. Me and stepmom get along fine. We don't fight or bicker. I don't think this is an evil stepmom moment, but who knows? Me and stepsister are actually pretty close. I help her with homework and I talk about her personal problems. I do love her very much. Back to the story, I didn't know what to do. I'm going to college. I want to be a civil engineer and work part-time. I don't have the means to live by myself. I called my aunt, asking if I could move in with her for the time being until I figured something out, offered to pay rent and all. She was aghast at what dad was doing. She said I absolutely could live with her, no rent needed, but also said she was going to deal with my dad. The next day, grandpa came to our house and they talked privately. I could hear my dad's angry voice, but couldn't understand anything being said. After a while, Grandpa came to my room and said I had three choices. The first was continue living with Dad and Stepmom like I was doing. Nothing would change, except without paying rent. The second was moving in with him and Grandma, or my aunt. Third was find a place of my own and he would pay the rent and costs for me. He said I didn't need to choose now. I could keep living with Dad, and if I changed my mind, to just tell him. I was actually relieved I could still live with my dad and that this madness was over. But the following days and weeks, dad and stepmom were pretty hostile towards me and I felt incredibly uncomfortable being in my own home. Even Cassie picked this up and asked me why they were angry at me. So I decided to move out and told grandpa. He said that he would take care of everything. A few weeks later, he moved me into one of his rental units. The apartment is lovely. He bought me a fridge, stove, and other essential items. He gave me a check for $15,000, saying this money is to help me start living on my own 
and that as long as I'm working or studying, I can live there rent-free for as long as I want. My dad and I have been pretty low contact since I moved out. He never came to visit me or me visit him. I miss them a lot, especially my stepsister, but I'm still hurt. Two weeks ago, my stepmom gave birth. I visited them in the hospital. It was a little awkward, but nice seeing them and my baby sister. Anyway, a few days ago, dad calls me saying he misses me, the kids miss me, and I should move back home. He apologized for asking me to move out, etc., and I told him I'd think about it. Yesterday, I visited my aunt and was telling her what my dad said, and my cousin laughed a little and said, I'm sure he does. I asked what he meant, and that's when they told me a lot of, until now, unknown information. Basically, my dad's home is actually my grandpa's, as in my aunt's. Basically, the deal he made with me, he made that deal with all of his kids and some other grandkids as well. He never wanted any of his family to have to worry about basic stuff like housing and food, etc. When I called my aunt that time, she called grandpa, who was furious with dad, not only for kicking me out, but also for charging me rent. That day, he went to my dad's and tore him a new one and threatened to have him evicted. But now the petty part. You know that $15,000 grandpa gave me? It's actually what I paid dad in rent all that time. And now he's making dad pay him back. Also, he's charging dad $1,200 for the rent loss in apartment that I'm living in. Call me dumb or naive, but until now, I never realized my dad didn't make that much money. We lived in a great house, always went on vacations, and lived very comfortable lives, but I guess grandpa has always been helping behind the scenes. Now my cousin thinks dad is struggling with three kids at home, a single income, and having to pay it back to grandpa. So he says dad wants me back because he imagines grandpa will stop punishing him if I'm back living with them. Honestly, I don't know what to do. I'm actually loving living on my own these past six months, but I do really miss them. I miss my siblings. I miss the life we had before all of this, but I don't know if moving back home is the right answer. And also, I'm hurt the reason he wants me back is for the money. Update. To answer some questions that people had, my aunt and grandpa are from my father's side of the family. My mom's side, unfortunately, I don't have much contact with. My maternal grandparents passed before she did. I have uncles and aunts. I see them once in a while, but they don't live close by. I also have two other uncles from my father's side. I'm close to them, but not as near my aunt. She was my rock when my mom passed. I consider her a second mom. My stepmom knew about the rent that I was paying. It was implied stepsister would need to do the same when she turned 18, but I don't know if she knew dad didn't own the house or the extent of how much grandpa has financially helped dad. Now to the update. Monday, the day after my post, I called dad and said I decided to not move back. I didn't mention anything I was told, just that I was settled here, and moving back seemed like a step back. But I also said I wanted to keep in contact with them. They could invite me for dinner whenever they wanted, and I also said I would love for my stepsister and brother to be able to spend time with me here at home. He was disappointed, and I didn't feel any angriness in his tone at least. But he basically said a, we'll see, and left it at that. I was also disappointed. But then Friday he called me, Asked me if I wanted to have lunch Sunday, today. I said I already had plans with Grandpa and Grandma. He asked when I would be free, so we scheduled dinner for Thursday. I haven't told any of this to my stepsister. We talk and text regularly. She also hasn't heard them talking about me. But she did say my grandma, her mom's mom, is there to help with the baby and is being incredibly annoying. I laughed at that. I wanted to offer her to stay here, but didn't want her to get excited just for Dad to say no. So I'll try to talk with them Thursday. The big update is, I've just come back from visiting grandma and grandpa. We spent a lovely day together, but I also said I wanted to know everything that was going on. I wasn't a kid anymore, and I felt like living in lies. The most important things were things my cousin and aunt told me last week, but there were a few more. Grandpa has been subsidizing quite often our basic needs, like school, healthcare, etc., because dad hasn't one cent saved up according to my grandpa. Also, my college fund was mainly contributed by him, and mom before her passing. I guess that makes sense. I was also dumb to not realize this sooner. He also has set up funds for my baby siblings and also one for my stepsister because he didn't want her to feel excluded and not have the same opportunities as her siblings. This man is incredible. I love him so much. And yes, I'm very, very lucky. I've seen so many people commenting this. I know I'm so privileged to have grandparents and family members who can afford and are willing to help me. I hope one day I can help others the way that they're helping me. Anyways, I also expressed worries about dad's financial situation and he assured me that dad is fine, more than fine. He will have to be less frivolous with money for a while but that he would never let any of his kids or grandkids suffer or be in need of anything. As many of you said, he's trying to teach dad a lesson I should have taught him a long time ago. So I'll stay out of it. 
I don't think I'll tell dad that I know about this. I know many of you said to confront him, but I think it's for the best if he continues thinking that I'm oblivious. Lastly, we talked about why dad kicked me out. He didn't have an answer either. I could see he and grandma were very hurt by what dad did. He said he asked for an explanation, but he got none. I'll continue having a relationship with my siblings outside of my dad and stepmom. I'll also try to schedule some weekly dinner with them. I know what you guys said about my father is mostly true, but I need to at least try to have a relationship with him. If not for him, then for my siblings and for me. But don't worry, I won't let him treat me like that anymore. Your grandpa is the greatest of all time. I wish I could have had someone like him in my life. I still think that your dad is trying to erase his last wife slash your mom from his memory, as I've heard about such things all too often, although maybe not consciously. I'm not sure at this point if he's being honest. I hope things go well for you. My first thought was how Grandpa is taking advantage of non-family members to be able to afford all of this, since OP mentioned rental properties. So basically, because your grandpa is a scummy landlord, he has millions of dollars to pay for all of your family's stuff. Free apartment here for you, free house for your dad. Just because your grandpa is rich doesn't mean he's not a jerk, and you're just as guilty as he is for taking his dirty money. I'm sorry to disappoint you, young Redditors, but once you become an adult, parents are not obligated to give free rent, free food, free car, or a free house. It's all on goodwill of the parents. Regardless of whether OP's father got the house for free, he can give free rent, charge a dollar a month for rent, or one million a month for rent. The OP is crying that it's insane that she has to leave, but he can do whatever the heck he wants. The OP's dad is only punished because he let himself be held hostage to his father's donations. It's his own problem. You get free stuff or free money, you can get strings attached. You can get free money Monday and have it cut off Tuesday. Charging rent can be a parenting lesson. My wife's kids are in their mid-twenties, never paid rent, never picked up a broom or did anything in the house, never had a credit card, worked part-time because working full-time is too hard. This may seem like paradise to the average Redditor, but those are not well-adjusted adults. If I decide to sell the house and move across the country tomorrow, they will be sad puppies, and Redditors will cry for them too. You know what I always wonder? Do you think that Redditors would still love their favorite celebrities if they found out that they're landlords too? Well, good PR should kind of keep that stuff under wraps, right? And when your PR is really good, then if a cop pulls you over for drunk driving, he'll have all the news sites putting out hit pieces on him, just to keep everything in sync. My ex-husband did himself out of a grand life. My ex-husband was a problem. I didn't mind the myriad of health conditions he had, but the fact that he refused to take care of himself was the real issue, especially when his problems caused me to lose the very little sleep that I was going to get. I worked for a terrible corporate security firm that really doesn't care about its employees. I was the single field supervisor in my region, and on top of my regular 40-hour work week, I was also called on emergency to fill open positions. This was during the height of lockdown as well, which eventually put me at a regular 80 to 100 hours per 7-day work week. The money was incredible, but I was miserably exhausted. At the time, my husband was working part-time and receiving SSI, and spending all of his income on himself, video games and fast food, against his doctor's orders, while I paid both of our shares of the bills, car payment, insurance, phones, etc. This went on for about three years, getting progressively worse as time went on. Despite the amount of money I covered for him, I still managed to bump my credit by paying off my car and saved enough to buy a house. Nothing too fancy, but it's a two-story with an unfinished basement, plenty of space, decent-sized yard, creek, and really cool neighbors who constantly invite us over to drink and play pool. While moving, I was still working 80 plus hours and couldn't spare time to help much, but I paid for the moving truck and dinner for anyone willing to help us pack and move. I asked my then husband to make sure everything gets packed. He packed all of his own belongings, then the household furniture, then ignored whatever didn't fit, was late returning the moving truck and I had to call about the fee, which they were very kind enough to waive considering my circumstances. The result was that the majority of my stuff, my roommate's stuff, and my brother's stuff didn't fit in the moving truck. My brother was making trips every day after work to pick up a car load and bring it home. I asked my ex-husband to please do the same and he agreed. Three weeks later, I finally got a day off. I worked a 12-hour shift and planned to go pack up a few boxes and take them home while I was out. I walked into the house and saw that my ex had literally done nothing. Three weeks he said he had been moving our stuff and he hadn't touched a thing. I had a meltdown. My legs gave out from shock and I sobbed on the stairs. My roommate and best friend happened to also come in right after me and found me on the stairs. 
He held me while I cried and assured me that he would take a few days off to get everything packed up and moved. He told me to go home and sleep, but I told him I'm already here, so I might as well take a few boxes, since my worthless husband lied to me about doing so. He helped me pack up some things and I drove home. I didn't even bother to unload it. I went inside and collapsed on my bed and cried myself to sleep. Hours and hours later, I finally woke up, a groggy mess, and made my way out to my car to start unloading. Best friend was there unloading his own car with a tired smile. He had been going all day and the sun was setting. Meanwhile, my husband was slacking off in the basement doing who knows what, breaking his promise. We managed to get everything moved, but I had to extend the lease by one week and pay a prorated rental cost, all due to my husband's neglect. I was quickly racking up anger at him, and finally when we were moved, I sat him down and told him how angry I was about the lies and his laziness and what he caused. He started accusing me of all kinds of things in return, like how I wouldn't passionately hug him because of his medical issues. I lost it. I screamed at him that I don't passionately hug anyone. I don't even passionately hug myself because I'm working the equivalent of two jobs with overtime to support his lazy butt and pay for his lifestyle because he wastes all of his money on fast food that he shouldn't even be eating and video games, and because he doesn't lift a single finger to do anything around the house, like unpacking, cooking, cleaning, nothing to make my life easier. In fact, he's actively making my life harder. I'm still cleaning up after him when he leaves dishes everywhere and stains in my carpet. So no, I don't want to passionately hug him if he's not going to do anything to earn it. He went radio silent on me for two weeks. It got progressively worse. He wouldn't text me or speak to me, wouldn't answer my calls, and eventually he wouldn't even look at me. Meanwhile, he's still living off my money. So finally one day I message him to ask him why he's treating me this way and he ignores me. I ask several other questions and nothing. Finally, I tell him that if he hates me so much, he should just divorce me. He tells me the next day he wants a divorce. I ask him why. They're not going to believe his answer. You don't do enough for me. Oh boy, did he mess up. I unleashed it. I told him that I do everything for him. I pay for everything so he can have the cushy life. I give a roof over his head, food in his belly, money in his bank account, and taking days off specifically to spend time with him. That I was doing absolutely everything for him, and this is the repayment I get? I got extremely quiet and told him that since he wants the divorce, he had to file, and if he even suggested it forcing me to sell my house that I paid for, I would destroy him. I would hire an expensive lawyer, force him into the longest court battle of his life, and take him for every single penny he would ever earn for the rest of his life, along with court costs. Then I kicked him out. He moved out. He told me he was moving in with his family a few cities over and asked me to file. I filed in my county because it was closest. He raged at me when he found out. He wanted me to file online and pay an extra $270 out of my pocket since he expected me to pay for the entire thing, and I told him no. A few days later, I got a strange text from him that didn't sound like him. I argued with him, then a confession was made. It was his girlfriend. He had lied to me again and moved to New York from Georgia. She went psycho on me and screamed at me via text. Long story short, we argued and I told her I wouldn't be speaking to her again. I'm filing in my county because I already started the process, and I'm not changing my mind because he lied to me. If he hadn't lied, I might have been willing to file online, but I'm definitely not now. Months go by, and finally the date comes. She drove him to Georgia, and they were 15 minutes late. I knew this because I was 15 minutes early, and the clerk asked if I could contact him, so I went outside to do so. I saw her roll up. I told him she's not allowed inside due to lockdown restrictions, but honestly, I wouldn't have let her inside because I hate her. He nodded and up we went. We spoke to the clerk and started our paperwork. I have some legal knowledge, definitely a lot more than him, due to curiosity and things that have happened to me in the past, so I knew which questions to ask. I know how lazy this brat of a human is. He hates doing anything he doesn't have to do. So I reminded him in front of the clerk that he still had property at my home and I want it out of my house. The clerk told him that anything he leaves on my property after a certain date will legally belong to me and there will be no way of getting it back without my express consent. He asked if he could work something out with me, and I told him no, you'll have to adhere to these legal guidelines, and anything left afterward will be forfeit. And even more good news, I married my best friend, and we've been together for nearly four blissful years now. On our fifth anniversary, he had agreed to a ceremony, since we were married in a simple ceremony with only two witnesses. And for more petty revenge, I still have my ex's childhood art binder, which he cherishes, and I will continue to hold it until he pays me back the $400 he owes me for the brand new tires I put on his car a mere few weeks before he decided he wanted the divorce. 
It's been over four years. I'm never giving it back at this rate, and I do send him annual reminders. Karen demands I babysit for her, even though I won't be able to, because we're friends. So about a week ago, I got a call from someone I would consider a friend. We're not super close, but we are friendly, and we get together with the same group of friends a lot. She called and said that her kids were talking about how much fun they have with mine and wanted to know if we would be free this coming Saturday, a week and a half away at the time. My kids really do like hers, and I want to be better friends with her as well, so I said sure. She was relieved and said her husband would be out of town and she needed a babysitter from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. I felt like it was a major bait and switch because I thought she wanted to do something altogether, but I felt bad backing out when I had already told her I was completely free that day. I should have said something right then, but I didn't. Well, yesterday, I ran into a friend of mine and she asked if I was excited for Saturday. I thought that was weird because no, I'm not excited to babysit someone else's kids for 14 hours but I said my kids were definitely excited. She said, oh good, is your husband taking them to do something fun or who's watching them? To which I made a face and responded that I was watching them. So then she was the one who was confused and said, so you're not coming? Well, last week I didn't go to the end of year PTA meeting because I had just started my period and I felt crummy and I didn't wanna go. I guess after the fact, some friends went out to lunch they decided to plan a big girls' day to relax before the kids are back home all day for the summer. Going to the city, shopping, pedicures, eating at nice restaurants, etc. And when it was brought up that I would probably love to go too, this friend said she needed to talk to me about some PTA stuff that I missed, so she would tell me about it when she called me. But instead, she decided to use me as her babysitter. So I called the friend, and I told her I wasn't aware of the girls' day at the time, and that I wouldn't be able to watch her kids after all. She asked if my husband could watch her kids too, which was no. She started crying that she really needed this, and what would she do now since her husband won't be home and it's too late to find someone willing to watch five kids for 14 hours with no pay. And then once the tears weren't working, she just got angry. She said it was rude to back out of a commitment just so I could selfishly do something fun and how I'm an awful friend. My friends are all feeling super uncomfortable with this whole thing. We're all typically a very happy and drama-free friend group, so I know no one wants to take sides, and now I'm wondering if I should even go at all. So, am I the jerk for backing out of watching her kids after I had committed to it already? Update. I followed the advice from a lot of you to talk to one of the friends I'm closer to in the group, Sarah, to kind of get a feel for what was going on. Sarah said she was kind of frustrated with everyone. After I ran into the friend, her name is Casey to make it less confusing, Casey had filled everyone in on what had happened. They all agreed that the mean friend, Jenny, shouldn't have lied or tricked me into watching her kids, but they all sympathized with her. I guess it is Jenny's 15th anniversary this weekend, but her husband forgot and had planned a boys camping trip. So she was sad and angry with her husband, and they all knew she would really need a little getaway to cheer her up. Though it doesn't sound like anyone blamed me for not babysitting, they were disappointed for her and put all of their energy into making a plan for her to still be able to go. No one really seemed to bat an eye whether I was going to go or not, or cared that I was sad, except for Sarah. However, when it came time to make final plans for everything, someone decided to do the math and realized that if I was going to come, we would no longer all fit into the Suburban my friend Kim was going to drive. It's a two-hour drive to the city, so taking one vehicle was definitely ideal. Sarah volunteered to drive her car, and we would just take two, but it all just felt so forced and uncomfortable that I just ended up backing out. I mentioned in a few of my comments that I've always known I'm not one of the most involved friends in the group, but I've known most of them for almost a decade, so I guess I thought there would be more substance to our friendship than they all did. I don't think any of them have anything against me or dislike me, but I'm realizing I'm just not that important to them. It was pretty disappointing, and it definitely opened my eyes. So all of that happened on Thursday, and I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty heartbroken by all of it. The next day when my husband came home for lunch, he told me to hurry and pack an overnight bag because he had booked a hotel room for me and my sister-in-law to go have our own girls' night. His mom and sister pulled up an hour later so his mom could watch the kids after my husband went back to work, and his sister, who is seriously just the best, and I had the best 24-hour getaway ever. Am I the jerk for purchasing my guy friend his dream birthday present and outshining his girlfriend in the process? My guy friend, Tom, has been one of my best friends since college. We're in our mid-twenties now, and both of us are currently in committed relationships with long-term partners. I've never had any feelings for Tom, nor has he ever had feelings for me. 
Since college, Tom has been a huge watch fanatic. Two months ago, he was showing me this stunning vintage watch and made an offhanded comment about how he would die of joy if he were to somehow get his hands on one. Very coincidentally, I was in New York City a few weeks ago and I stumbled upon this watch store that just so happened to have the exact one Tom wanted. It was expensive, I won't lie, at about $2,500, but I decided to get it for his 25th birthday. To me, it was basically fate. My boyfriend and I do very well financially, so this was something that I could personally afford and wanted to buy for Tom, especially knowing how happy it would make him. Tom has a tradition of hosting a dinner party at his place for his birthday and then following up with a cake and gift opening. I told him before the dinner that my gift was a huge surprise and asked if he could save it for last and he agreed. His girlfriend ends up going first and she gets him this gorgeous sweater that she crocheted for him and a book that he's been wanting, which I thought was super thoughtful and lovely. Last, it was my gift. When he opened it and saw what it was, he literally screamed, hopped over a bunch of people and squeezed me in this bear hug. I was so happy to see him happy. It genuinely filled me with so much joy. He even got emotional and I saw him swipe a few tears. He also said that it was the best gift he had ever received. The whole time, his girlfriend was only slightly smiling and stayed quiet. The next morning, I get a text from his girlfriend that essentially said that although she appreciated my thoughtful gift, she thought it was a bit out of touch and lacking awareness. She admitted that Tom had also told her about the watch and she wanted to get it for him, but it was way out of her budget. She accused me of knowing this. I had no idea and still getting it to rub it in her face and to outshine her. She finished by saying how she felt like I had overstepped a boundary by getting the gift and would appreciate me not doing anything similar to it again in the future. I responded and told her that while I could see her point of view, I was just trying to do a nice thing for a close friend of mine. I asked her, wouldn't you rather he had gotten the gift and seen the happiness that it brought him than not getting it at all? She responded that that happiness was only shared between me and Tom and no one else and that she felt hurt by my actions. Only my boyfriend knows about this and he's on my side, but thinking through it all again, I do see how I could have overstepped. But my boyfriend says that it's not my job to apologize for her insecurities. So, am I the jerk here? Not the jerk. You weren't thinking of how to hurt her. You just wanted a nice gift for your friend. Your boyfriend is right. You don't need to apologize for her insecurities. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.